Thank you all. Um, Mr. Mibarbeck, um, I think it's made very persuasively. By the way, clearly patents are part of the free market system. It's the way that you protect intellectual property and you incent creativity. Now, whether it's being abused is another issue. And you mentioned the patent thickets, which is actually uh, legislation sponsored by John Cornyn to do away with them. So that's recognized, but I think uh, without protection of intellectual property, we would not have this innovation. Why would you? Why would you put the time into it? Let's just make that point. But, Mr. Mibardic, Dr. Lagdwala makes, I think, persuasive point that without the profit incentive, you will not get the innovation. Um, are you disputing that? I am not. So you're just kind of the degree of the profit taking, if you will. I'll point out, by the way, that the three examples you gave seem to be all Medicare patients, and there is legislation out there which will cap the out-of-pocket exposure to, uh, for Medicare patients to these expensive drugs. I think it'll be $2,000 in June of 2025, and the catastrophic portion is going away now. But, Dr. Lakdawala, uh, that said, somebody's paying. Yes, insurance is making it more affordable, Medicaid is making it more affordable, Medicare is making it more affordable, I could go down, but somebody is paying. In my state, I was recently told that pharmaceutical costs for the Medicaid program are now 35% of the total. Um, and so, um, yes, maybe we could do some value-based purchasing. That's a lot of money, though. That's a huge program. That's not hospitals and doctors, that's the pharmaceutical cost. Um, so I think Mr. Maybardek would say, listen, they've got enough profit to innovate. Um, what we're really talking about is more than the profit required to incent. Would you disagree with that? Well, I, I think the question is really how much, whether we want to decrease profits or not. And we know that whenever you decrease profits, you get less innovation. Um, and the research that we've done gets to exactly that question. If you were to reduce prices and profits, what would the net result be? You'd certainly save money, but you would also lead to fewer new drug discoveries and so lower So are budget. we at the sweet spot now, or could we do something to make drugs a little bit more affordable to the Medicaid program, for example? Because I'm looking at this gene therapy, and obviously how they're initially priced is only based upon the restraint of the company. But if you have a compelling gene therapy, they could almost name their price. And it's going to be very difficult for a Medicaid program not to cover. Uh, so, But this could bankrupt taxpayers. So thoughts on that? Yes, so I don't think we are at a spot where lowering prices makes us better off. But for gene therapies, I absolutely agree there's a significant problem. And the issue is that the prices are all paid up front when there's the most uncertainty about whether the gene therapy is going to work in the long run. Now, value-based purchasing could obviously play a role here. Um, but if you do value-based purchasing, you still have a – how do you negotiate the upfront cost? I come up with a drug for uh, gene therapy for a sickle cell. I treated a lot of sicklers. You want to treat them, and you charge $20 million a person. Um, I can't believe they would get that, but, but you see, the only thing that would stop them from asking that may be the sticker shock. So how do you negotiate that first out of the gate price? Because I think that's a kind of a question that's kind of hanging out there. And you're the free market guy, so I'd like your opinion. On the whiteboard, yes, that's You're the true. Whiteboard guy. It's, it's actually not the case that you should negotiate the actual price up front. Instead, a value-based price would mean that the price will respond over time. So f imagine a situation where gene therapies were paid for in installments and the I, size I get of that. And believe me, I've written about that in stat, in stat, if you ever wish to dig up something out of stat behind a paywall. Uh, but it still means that if you've got an initial high price, no matter what your value-based purchasing arrangement is, it could still be something which society could not afford. Uh, what do you think of the German model? Uh, Dr. Baker, I think, came up with that, in which there is, uh, you know, you can ask whatever price you want for the first two years, but then after that, there's going to be some sort of negotiation based upon real-world data. Yeah, I think the, the challenge with the German model is it's actually very hard to predict the outcomes, that if you look at the ratings that the Germans um, produce of the benefits of drugs, they're not well correlated with negotiated prices. So if I'm an innovator trying to figure out what I'm going to get paid in Germany, it's really hard. And if you can't predict your returns, then they're not going to work as financial incentives. Okay. Mr. Amin, have you had a chance to evaluate the bill that's working its way through Judiciary Committee and might be included in a year-end package as to its effectiveness in addressing uh, patent thickets? Yeah, push your button, man. Senator Blumenthal and uh, Cornyn? Yes. Bill? I think it will potentially cap for biologics uh, uh, patents that can be enforced to about 20. 
Uh, I've actually uh, uh, given some technical advice on that bill. I don't think it's going to resolve the problem. You don't think it's going to resolve the problem? No. I see. Um, okay. Well, thank you all. Very thoughtful. All right. Thank you all. Very good discussion. Appreciate you being here.